And open up with just a quick word of prayer. I know Marilyn prayed. I prayed. Marilyn prayed. I know y'all have been prayed up, but we're going to pray <laughs> again. So let's talk to it now. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we just come right now. So grateful, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, to grow in wisdom and understanding, God, that we might be able to understand uh, your will for each and every day, that we might be able to uh, discern better that we might be able to make good decisions. And so, God, we pray right now that you would just uh, bless us, give us wisdom, insight, understanding, God. God, I pray that you help us to ask our questions and share our experiences, God. And so, Lord, we just bless this time and make it fruitful as our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I'm, uh, no pressure on y'all, but I just had uh, the class before y'all, and they were fine. So, <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> so, you you sound like a lot of pressure. Each group is individual, but I'm just telling you. You gotta discern that. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta discern that. Yeah, you gotta discern that. Yeah. 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 So, so, again, welcome. Um, my other class, we give all names, but uh, you know, you guys are a little, little larger. <laughs> You've seen that finger go up. Like, <laughs> 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 number one. Yeah. Like, I thought it was a student going all the time. <laughs> so, so, God is good all the time. Amen. So, so today, uh, in our session, we're talking about practicing spiritual discernment in everyday service, in everyday service and so so what what's uh when it comes to the sermon what's what's some of the challenge before we jump into this you know you you hear the sermon i was telling the last group i said now until i really got involved in church i never i never heard the word sermon in elementary middle school high school college but now i understand that the sermon covers everything Right. So, so what's some of the challenges with with the service? Super Christians, go ahead. Oh, <laughs> super, <laughs> super Christians. Ah, okay. Being able to recognize God in yes. the yes. process, Amen. telling Amen. the difference whether it's the enemy or God, separating right. the two. Yep. That big challenge is recognizing exactly. is this God? Is this you? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. right. That's that mm -hmm. that God. Is this you? Yeah. Right. What What other kind of challenges? You yeah. Can move to go ahead, Michelle. Insight. Mm -hmm. Insight, right? You say insight? insight. Yeah, yeah. Trying to gain insight. It's a challenge because if we want God to give us that that insider, right, uh, information, then we might be able to move forward. Mm -hmm. And then just moving too quickly, and so you, that's why you need a discernment, yeah, because you can act upon something that you weren't even supposed to act upon. You're supposed to wait. I was thinking of uh, patience. Moving too quick. Be a patient. Oh, way too long. Right? <laughs> Man, we got the spectrum. Right? Because we got some folks that's like, they always moving quickly. And some don't never move. God, like I told you to go. Go ahead, D. And sometimes, like you said, moving too fast. Sometimes, like, I'm in a situation where I was getting ready to leave my house to go work. And I, and I got sidetracked. Mm -hmm. And by the time I got there, it was an accident. Sometimes mm -hmm. moving too fast can cause you to lose your life with somebody else. Mm -hmm. Come on now. You know, yeah. The spirit is telling you to wait, wait. Listen mm -hmm. to that voice, the inner voice. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So so again, Listen. being able to, to understand yeah. when to move, how to move, move on time, not move too slow. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Not move too fast. Mm -hmm. Right. Be a listener. Again, going back to what Mary said, make sure you're listening. Yeah. Listening. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Like you said, I need you to always travel with me when you teach my class. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but those are real challenges, right? That's why this is so important. 
And so somebody read for me under that def where it says definition of spiritual discernment. Somebody read those first two uh, bullets, first two paragraphs. Discernment is not a matter of simply telling the difference between right and wrong. Rather, it is telling the difference between right and almost right. <laughs> and that's Charles Spurgeon. The ability to think biblically about all areas of life is essential to an unwavering life. It is incumbent upon the Christian to seize upon the wisdom God has provided for in his precious truth. Without it, Christians risk being tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine. Wow. Ephesians 4 and wow. 14. But we talked about a little earlier about being living in the grave, right? Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to the sermon, again, it's simply not just knowing right and wrong, as mm -hmm. Charles Purgeon said. That's that's black and white. But sometimes we operate in the gray. Yeah. What about when God is, when you see something that is good, but what God wants is better? Mm -hmm. Right? Go ahead. No, I'm okay. sorry. You already you know the rules. You think about the shoulders. Go ahead. You man. And we often miss that, right? Because again, God's will is is may be for us uh, um, uh, individually, mm -hmm. right? We, we know in scripture, there's things that all of us are commanded to do, mm -hmm. but there's some things that you commanded to do that she ain't commanded to do. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, uh, Deacon Harold Willis, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say also too in that discernment, there, there are times when we feel that we wanna help someone or, or be a part of that and we have to have better discernment that 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 person may be what God wants them to be, mm -hmm. so that we don't get involved, right, and, and remove a person or get involved with something where God, I actually have you where I want you to be, right? And yeah. kind of knowing that, right, mm -hmm. and trusting that, you know, instead of you know our motivations. I was speaking earlier about why we do things. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just knowing yeah. that it's God. To that, to that comment. Imagine, all right, because some of us, if we was in the Israelite, one of the Israelites that was in the uh, you know, out there wandering for 40 years. Some of us, the whole 40 years, would have been trying to figure out how we're going to get out this, out this, out this wandering land. We'd have been like, hey, Mo, uh, uh, Mo, we got a plan. We done put it together. We met. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, we tired of wandering. Manna is, you know, I didn't have every kind of manna. You know, not, not, not understanding that that God's will yeah. For you to be here, yeah. 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 all right, for this time. And so so for us, a lot of times when it comes to discernment, it's not always about uh, what you do, but it's also what you don't do, mm -hmm. right, in mm -hmm. God's way. So somebody read that third, uh, that third paragraph right there in the simplest terms. In the simplest terms, discernment is wisdom. The dictionary defines discernment as the quality of being able to grasp and comprehend what is observed, obscure skills uh, in discerning and acts of perceiving or discerning something. In the Christian faith, it is similar, it's a simple concept, but it is discerned by the Holy Spirit. So when we talk about discernment, again, it's being able to, to understand these, these concepts and different things, but for us, we got help. Amen. The Holy Spirit, right? That, that walks with us, uh, that that dwells within us. Uh, the, the scripture describes him as the paraclete, the one that comes alongside. So you're not making decisions on your own. I, I love to think about the Holy Spirit like this. You know, you uh, when you're in school, you study, you put all the work in. Some of us had tutors, right? And the tutors would help us to understand things better, give us wisdom, give us insight. Hey, this is how you work the technique, right? Can you imagine if every time you took a test, your tutor came with you? Mm. And you stuck on you stuck on an answer, is it B or a C? And you study, and the, and the tutor is, is there in your ear saying, hey, remember we went over this. Right. And now think about how you how we work through this. Yeah. You you got this. Mm. You've seen this before, right? 
Can you imagine being in the test and your tutor is right there to talk to you? Well, in our Christian walk, we got a tutor that's with us to help us to discern and understand God's will and purpose for us. Amen? Amen. 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 So, so somebody read this first bullet as we understand uh, spiritual uh, discernment. Let's, let's explore this concept a little bit. For a Christian, discernment is a process by which God helps an individual reach the best decision. The Latin root of discernment means to separate or set apart. In Christian life, it is the ability to separate good from evil, truth from falsehood, wisdom from foolishness. Amen. Um, let me see, we got some holiness folks here. <laughs> we got some holiness folks here. I saw you. So, um, <laughs> what does the word holy mean? Set apart. All right? Set apart. Right? What does uh, the process of sanctification mean? Huh? <laughs> Say it with confidence. Being set. Amen. <laughs> Isn't it interesting that the word, the root, Latin word, root word for discernment, means to separate, to be set apart, to be holy, to be sanctified. So when you when you are making decisions and you 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 are sanctifying that decision, you are are running it through the filter to make sure that it lines up with what the Word of God, with the Holy Spirit that dwells in you that helps you to separate between good and evil, between what wisdom. From foolishness. What's some of the challenges that that are that, that we face today that uh, we may not have faced uh, in our past? Or I'm, I'm, I'm reading the room in our in our childhood. Social media. Social media, social media right? In social media, what does it deliver to us? We get information, right? And when we get information, what do we need to do with that information? Discern. Discern. I was saying, I was sharing with the, with the group before. Y'all remember uh, how we used to do research projects? Mm -hmm. Man, I remember when we finally got the rest of the letters to the uh, encyclopedia. And we couldn't afford the whole, you know, remember you had the encyclopedia, you get certain, and then you got the ones with the certain years and history and all that. You know, books would come, right? The, the uh, UPS man or the postman be mad at you. And you got to carry them heavy over the books to the house. And you sit there and listen, some of us were the inquisitive kids, like, Oh wow, is that what it looks like in yeah. Ethiopia? Yeah. Wow, those good four pictures, right? You, you got all excited yeah. about. It. Then when we got to school, we got sophisticated. We in the library, we gather our resources, we got all this stuff, stacks of books, and we're looking at this and we're looking at that, hours and hours of stuff. Now we get all that right, you. Yeah. But, but see, even when you get it right, you, you still got to discern it. You still got to make sure is it the, really the right source? Because some of us, we think Wikipedia is the. Like that? No. But, but again, we now have information at the. In a matter of seconds, and it's even more critical that we be able to discern, right? And what what are some of the things that our our children don't have that we don't have uh, that we had? They don't understand. Uh, so, like one person said, listen, I have to explain to explain to the kids that because they ask, well, what's wrong with that? Well, what's wrong with that? It ain't right because they don't have a baseline, right? I said it's like. Uh, uh, you go to your doctor, because now it's like, okay, whatever is cool for you, whatever you like. I said, it's like you go to your doctor, and the doctor says, hey, uh, we, got, we just took your temp, we did your vitals, just 110, your, your, your brain is melting. But if you feel comfortable <laughs> with that, with that if that's how you roll, then you're good. You know, your blood pressure is 200 over 110. Oh my God. But if you're able to, you know, operate with that and... If that makes you feel cool, you're, you're good with that. Yeah, we know your, your heart is beating like a rap song. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but if that's, 
And that's cool with you. And well, we're good with it. But that's how we deal with, with certain things in the world today. Because when you go to the doctor, they give you a vitals because they have a baseline of what's acceptable to your body, what's best for your body. They got a standard. And when it's outside the standard, they got to do things that help you come back in the standard. And so when it, when we talk about what we're our children and what we're being bombarded with, there's no standard. So what's good for you? So in order for you to truly practice discernment, you got to know what is the standard. Mm. Pastor? Yes, go ahead. So Kendall and I are doing this um, devotion that we do every day. In one of the weeks, one of the days, it spoke about this knowing good and evil, right? Like, and she was asking questions, how do we know that? And it's, it says one of the most significant ways to see it if it produces life or death, right? Well, and what we do, right? And it says Jesus came to bring the kingdom of heaven, heavenly way of life. It also produces fruits of the spirit. Then we know it's from God if it produces those things. Amen. So it's one of these in her friendships and things that she. Um, having better discernment, right? Like who are, who's really on your team, right? Mm -hmm. Talk to her about vetting out her friendships, mm -hmm. you know, knowing how do they treat others? You know, how, how are they, how do they deal with, you know, difficult situations? How do they act out? Mm -hmm. Then you can know where they're, the fruits of where they're coming from. Yeah. Right? Those type of things, right? And so, yeah. And we share that the Bible tells us that we are to train up our children in the way they should go, right? But part of that training is you got to train your child how to discern. Right. I, I'll, I'll tell this. I shared with them, uh, and uh, Karen shared as well, that, you know, D, uh, D was like, I don't know if Jeremiah is ready to go off to school nowhere. Because it's decision making. <laughs> it's challenging. Right? Because we, we discern. You got to be able to make good decisions. But not only do you have to be able to make good decisions, what about the people who have influence on you? Right? Right? Those people that are in your circle that will impact the decisions you make. I was I shared with them. I was talking to uh, a young guy I was having breakfast with, and we were talking about. Um, um, actually, it was my doctor, and we were talking about. He's a Raider fan. Praise the Lord. Very wise. <laughs> <laughs> We were talking about decision making. We we're talking about some of one of the, the players we got, Henry. Some of y'all uh, may know Henry Ruggs. Henry Ruggs was a was a star receiver from Alabama. Uh, we uh, uh, used a first round pick on him. Very talented young kid. Nick Saban, the coach of Alabama, who just recently retired, said this kid was a great kid. Great kid, great player, great character, all that. Right, he gets to Vegas, it's a nice little rookie contract, you know, in, in Sin City, celebrating out with his, his, his girlfriend and his friends out at Top Golf, having a good time, drinking. And so, this kid who had never been in trouble in his life hops in his brand new uh Corvette, chooses, makes a decision to drive 140 some miles an hour. On a, on a street. surface street in Vegas, mm. runs into somebody mm. and uh, yeah. Nick Saban says, he says, listen, a good friend, a good influence mm -hmm. would not have let him, let yeah, him yeah, get in that car. car. Yeah. Yeah. A good friend would have said, no, nah, sure. bro, we can Uber, we can yeah. whatever. And so my point is that not only the decisions we make, but the decisions of people who we roll with right. impact. So the sermon not only has an everyday application, sometimes it has life and death yeah. application. Amen. Yeah. Somebody read that uh that slide for me. Discernment is a spiritual gift, along with many others, described in Mark first Corinthians 12. God provides every Christian with spiritual gifts. However, not everyone uses them. The mm -hmm. Greek word for discernment is mm, <laughs> crisis. 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 This describes the ability to distinguish, discern, judge, or appraise a person, a person, statement, situation, or environment. It can be related to the discerning of spirits, as in 1 Corinthians 12 10, or between good and evil in Hebrews 5 14, 
NASB. Now, we all are called to be discerned. But some people have a spiritual gift of discernment. You know, if you ever there was somebody and they just like, mm, that one, no, no, no. And I mean, they really, the Lord didn't really show them, right? They have the gift. But we are all called to be discerned. Uh, to, to, again, put into practice those things. To be able to find out, to distinguish and discern, judge, and appraise a person's statement our situation. So whatever circumstances we're in, God has called us to be able to discern. Going back to what Harold said about uh, him and Kendall, the devotion, be able to discern between what's good and what's evil, right? Discerning spirits, small s, spirits, right? And so when we come to discerning, one of the greatest tools we have when it comes to discernment is God's word. Yeah. Is God's word. Uh, let's, let's, let's look at these scriptures. Somebody read that first scripture for me. Proverbs 3. Yes. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding. Think about him in all your ways and he will guide you on the right path. Amen. Amen. Your husband was very discerning. We noticed that there's no way on earth you'd be able to see that up there as you start to read and he provided a, a, another opportunity for me. <laughs> so I told you, hey, that is you know, we all we this for you. Do we actually take the time to understand this problem? What it says, what? Trust in the Lord. Lord. What? All your heart. You don't lean in your own understanding. Why do you think the writer of this proverb said, don't lean on your own understanding. What's wrong with our understanding? Y'all, y'all yeah. It's limited. Yeah. It's flawed. Yeah. Yeah. It's fickle. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting uh, when you, uh, and I think even some of the studies now show that it's even less. We used to say you you know, we actually use 10% of our brain, but I think the actual study shows about 7% oh, yeah. percent yeah. of our brain's capacity. Right. And look, look straight ahead, because I know some of y'all like that. <laughs> 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 some of read right now. <laughs> we, we have a limited capacity, and because we have a limited capacity, we don't, don't lean on your own understanding. Yeah. Right. I'll share that, uh, you know, many of us use GPS. Mm -hmm. Some of them just trust GPS implicitly, don't care where they tell you to go. Mm -hmm. Even it is to the Universal Studio headquarters when we're trying to get to the park. But anyway, <laughs> that's another uh, thing. So, when we, so <laughs> when, we, uh, when we use GPS, I mean, I don't know about you, sometimes I look at GPS and I'm like, that ain't the way. Yeah. It's a faster yeah. way than that. Yeah. Why is it taking me all around five extra miles to get here? Well, you know what? Well, it has access to information that you don't. It has traffic patterns, accidents, right? Road closures. All those things inform that information and it says, listen, I need you to trust me that I can get you to your destination in the most efficient way, but you got to trust me. And so when you lean on your own understanding, you end up stuck in traffic two hours late when you could have been there on time. So God sees everything. So when you trust in your own understanding, you can't see what he sees. Right? Right? When you say, well, I ain't going to do that because I see the circumstance and it looks like this. And God is like, I told you, do what I said. You got to trust the one who sees everything. It says trust him with what? All your heart. That means you're surrendering everything to him. I was listening to this uh, this devotion the other day. It was on, it was on marriage. And, um, and, and the lady was sharing. She said that and I, it's funny because I read this before. And uh, she said that uh, her and her husband was going through a terrible time. She was about ready to, you know, push mm -hmm. the the, uh, the eject button, right? <laughs> so 
pull the ripcord, all those stuff. So anyway, um, she says she's meeting with this with the, with the pastor and he's counseling her, and you know she thinks he goes kind of left because he's like, uh, "Do you believe Jesus Christ is Lord?" And she's like, "Yeah, you believe that uh, that that he he, he he rose from the dead?" And she's like, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he rose from the dead." Oh, okay. That's miraculous, huh? And she goes, yeah. He goes, but, so you believe that? That God raised his son from the dead, but you don't believe that he can raise your marriage mm -hmm. from the dead. You believe that he can suspend all biological, physiological laws and supersede them, but he can't raise your marriage from the dead. She said that statement right there just revolutionized mm -hmm. their whole thinking because they had to learn to trust yes. yes. the Lord. All they have to don't need what? All their yeah. own yeah. understanding. Now that you have all your ways, he'll direct your path. Amen. Mm -hmm. Somebody read Philippians 1, 9 through 11. And I pray this, that your love will keep on growing in knowledge and every kind of discernment, so that you can appro approve the things that are superior and can be pure and blameless in the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Amen. Amen. So here it is. Paul the Apostle, this is his prayer. He said, I'm telling you, Philippians, this is what I'm praying for you. That you what, will grow in knowledge and what? In every kind of discernment. See, discernment becomes, you take the knowledge and what? Rightly apply because we said in the simplest terms, it's wisdom. Mm -hmm. Right? It, it's wisdom. And so Paul's prayer for them is that they grow in their knowledge. I grow in a greater understanding of God's will. See, I become a better decision maker the more and more I know about the one who guides my life. When I start to know his 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 character, when I know his his will and his purpose for my life, I become a better decision maker. And so, but not only that, he says that he says he wants you to grow in that, that you may grow in the things that are what are superior. So when you run your decisions and you run your life and the things that you do through the filter. You'll find the things that are superior, those things that are better. Not just good, better and best. Because guess what? I want to be not only uh, uh, in, his, in his good will, but I want to be in his perfect will for my life. Amen? Amen. Y'all tracking so far? Yes, yeah. sir. All right. Let's, let's, let's look at this, this last one. Somebody take that first us moment. But test all things. Hold on to what is good. Stay away from uh, stay away from every kind of evil. Man, do not stay away from every kind of evil. Every kind. All of them. All of them. Jesus knows some of them. Every kind of evil. Right? But he said, test all things. How do we test it? By the word. By the word of God. Go ahead, Nick. Also, uh, Pastor, the Bible says you don't fight evil with evil; you fight evil with good. Amen. 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 And God is good all the time. All the time. That's right. We fight evil with good, but we got to test it. See, a lot of times we don't test it because we don't run it through the filter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, we don't want to know that. <laughs> I want to ask God because I know what He's gonna tell me. Right? It's funny we don't ask Him because we've already discerned. Yes. 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 What he already won. Yes. And we decided. Yes. 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 But guess what? He's the one that's given us the ability to serve. To serve. It's funny, you know, George Bush called himself the decider. Mm. Yes. Yes. But we know truly the one who helps us to decide is God. Mm. And we can discern because we have God. Mm. 
who dwells in us. You know, you have the spirit of the living God dwelling inside of you, right? Who is able to guide you and direct you. So you need to be test all things and hold on to what is good and right. Amen. Amen. And so, so you got to understand every, when we look at everyday service, discernment is biblical. It's what God wants us to do. Now, you're not on your own understanding. Understand that, that he wants you to grow in knowledge and discernment and that also that you must test all things. Um, um, uh, Celeste has shared a little thing that she uses, pause and ponder, right? That sometimes we just got to slow down and pause and ponder what is God saying, right? And when we ponder and pause, it's because I'm taking time to test it, to yeah. find out, is the God, is this you? Right, y'all right. said one of the challenges to discerning is finding out, God, is this you? Right, right? And, and if you are truly in the will of God, He's gonna let you know it's mm -hmm. all right. So, what does some of this stuff look like when we talk about, um, um again, the spiritual discernment, <clears throat> being able to leverage it for everyday life? Uh, a couple years ago, I was part of a, a study, a uh, study with pastors, and we studied Christian mindfulness. And one reason that was uh, in part of that, that study is because, you know, they were finding out that pastors, especially coming out of the pandemic, were burnt out. You don't know that uh, uh, the early part of the pandemic, uh, that pastors were committing suicide at record rates. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so so I was part of this, uh, this study from Azusa uh, Pacific, uh, Dr. Regina Child, uh, Trammell. Did somebody read her quote real quick? The main difference between a secular or Buddhist mindfulness practice and a Christian one is that we know that we have a relationship with our Savior who is active in our lives through Scripture. He hears us when we call Him, and the Holy Spirit provides us insight into God's heart and will for our lives. Mm -hmm. So we know that a lot of times when we think about um, you know, mindfulness, meditation, we, we think they're going to turn us into teeny turn. <clears throat> We're going to be ramming them in the echo and all of that. Amen. But, but the scripture teaches us to, to meditate on the scripture. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, Joshua 1 tells them we should think on it. Right. right. And be careful to do according to all that is written in it. Yes. Then you will make your way prosperous. Then yes. you will have success. So we're to study on the scripture. We're to meditate, y'all. What's the difference between memorizing and meditating? Meditation, you actually spending Application. time and focusing on it, and you're letting it actually dwell in your heart and your mind because you're focused on the word of God. And in that time, you're allowing Him to speak to you mm -hmm. during that time of meditation. Amen. Amen. Y'all, yeah. y'all know that word uh, meditate actually. Uh, Here's the word uh, that is uh, for that they use for um, cows and camels to digest their food. And they regurgitate it up. They chew on it again. The chew the cud is what it talks about. Chew the cud. And so we talk about <laughs> meditating on the scripture. It's again making it a part of your heart. It's the scripture I memorize, but when I start to meditate on it. I start to think about how it applies in my life. I'm moving from my head to my what? Right. To my heart. It becomes a part of it. Go ahead. Also, to meditate means to speak, to mutter. Yes. You know, so when you're meditating, you're speaking that word, you know, even if you're not like as boisterous as I am now, but even under your breath, just all throughout the day, just speaking it and mm -hmm. turning it over yes. again and again, you know, oh, speaking it. Speaking mm -hmm. that word over your life, right? Mm -hmm. Constantly. Mm -hmm. So some of the things that we learned, thank you for that. We learned uh, during our study, and, I, and I'm going to share this. I, I'll share it with you guys as, as well. I'm going uh, to with Dr. Uh, Trammell to make sure I'm cool because um, I still have like the, the session. She would take us through um, a guided time of prayer, um, and we would just spend time mm -hmm. just really focusing in on God. She would show us how to, uh, to just kind of breathe and slow yourself down, yeah. right? Because many of us, we go through life, we, 
right? Even in our devotion. Okay, God, say that, that you got me, direct me. Oh, wow, that was good. I read that on the, all right, poof, poof, I'm done, right? But taking time to slow down to really hear from God. So a couple tips on practicing uh, mindfulness. The first thing is sit still in the presence of God. Simon says, be still and know that I am God. Some of us, we can't sit still even in church, right? <laughs> and God sometimes, have you ever uh, experienced where God slowed you down? Where God stilled you? Right? I've been there like, okay, you're still, uh, I'm still, are you listening now? <laughs> right? So, so again, sit still in the presence of God, taking time to really uh, understand that, that God wants you to Spend time with him. Mm -hmm. Right? It's yeah. it's interesting how we don't we won't crave out we carve out time for everything else, but we don't carve out time mm -hmm. to sit still. Yeah. And I'm gonna tell you in this study, that was a challenge. Because you had to sit yourself down. We had assignments, but really hear from God. Mm -hmm. Right? Go ahead. Uh, I remember a time I was sitting out on my patio, and I'm always in the business trying to get stuff done. And I was sitting on a patio. And I was like, I had to do this, I had to do this, and God was like, sit and be aware of me. And I sat, and I felt my body being anxious, but he's like, he sat me down. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at the palm trees flowing, he's like, see, that's me. Sit, mm -hmm. sit with me. Mm -hmm. And I had to learn. You really have to learn mm -hmm. how to sit and be still and let your body become quiet yeah. um, and that takes practice yeah. well we live in a society where we go 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 right and so so even it's funny when I do this study I would have to put my headphones on because it's even when it's quiet it's not yeah. 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 <laughs> right yeah. you know now now you know in cop they used to be the gunshots and siren so <laughs> <laughs> but but now you still have yeah. stuff you hear the cars and neighbors playing all kind of things but you have to consciously just say, God, I want to just sit in your presence. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Oh, I'm just like, I'm just like, I'm We're just talking about this in the last session about being intentional. And when you talk about mindful meditation, you know, because um, I did it in the secular world with my job. But when you talk about sitting down and, and with God, because you said it's not always quiet. It's not even the stuff that's on the outside that bothers you. Sometimes it's the stuff that's going on inside. Yeah. Right? You know, all the distractions that goes on that, that's going on in your mind, right? So you have to really be intentional. We talked about what that means in the last session. You have to be intentional about sitting down and practicing how to sit still before God. Yes. And it has to be something that you have to practice. I mean, yes. because there's so many things that the enemy, yourself, your mind, I can only speak for me. My mind is constantly going. Anybody who works with outreach knows that my mind is going. And I have to quiet myself down because I'll make myself nervous or I'll get all scattered and while I'm trying to sit in God's presence. And God is not the author of confusion. Mm -hmm. He wants me to sit, sit, sit still and notice the trees yeah. or notice you know, the little crack on the floor mm -hmm. or notice just the small things because he's everywhere. Yeah. So yeah. And those, That's why it's called a spiritual discipline. Mm -hmm. Right? Silence. Solitude. Go ahead, Larry. Um, in reading the psalms, I, I was noticing that it in the psalms and in some of the scriptures with Selah. Yeah. And it, I've never seen or noticed it before. It just means calm and reflect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just, just relax and reflect for a minute on the word that, that was just given to you. Mm -hmm. It's powerful and it needs to be, you know, it needs to be uh, given its proper respect. Mm -hmm. And to give it its proper respect, you need to just pause and reflect on what the Lord just said. Amen. Amen. And and uh, many of us, we don't know that is a, a, a poetic a po a poetic tool that is not to be stated. It is an indication of what you should do. Ponder what you just read. Pause and reflect. Right. When, so in, even in the psalm, psalm, psalms, some of the psalms you have built in, take time to pause and reflect. On what was just said yes. to you, right? And so, so again, getting in that in that mindful uh, mind of just being in the presence of God. How how often uh, have you been in prayer and your own thoughts interrupted your prayer time? Oh. Oh. <laughs> you, are, you, are, you, are, you know, you in a good place. You, 
Okay, God, it's me and you and then. You start thinking about what you got. You're like, oh, wait a minute, what was I just talking about? Right? One thing I I'm taking a practice to, I don't journal like I should. But but when God speaks to me or shares something, I'll pull out my notes mm -hmm. and I'll write it on my on my phone or something because again, my your mind is going right. But that time is important. Get your hands Yeah, I was gonna say, um, you know, the word says that you know God is not He's not in the earthquake. No. You know He's not in in the, in the storm. Yeah. You know He said, but He speaks in a, in a calm and still voice mm -hmm. so you know you know so if he's speaking that way what makes us think that you know we can hear him with all the racket and all the stuff that's going on that mm -hmm. you have to that's quiet good. yourself and still yourself so that you can hear him speak to you mm -hmm. you know so, yeah because you know, you know, he don't have to get loud right you know, like you said not in, yeah. not in, <laughs> he doesn't speak that way mm -hmm. and it just does something yeah. to your spirit when you Quiet yourself. Right. You know, a lot of people, you know, I, I know I'm one of those. You know, I hear a lot of people say, you know, I always hear God speak to me when I'm in the shower. You know, well, why do you think that, <laughs> you know, because you're calm God, and, you're, and you're relaxed and it's quiet in the shower. That's a great like, point. Oh, like, yeah. You hear this voice, it's just like, oh, you know. <laughs> you're like, I can, I can get your attention now. You get attention in the shower. You yeah. guys calm and quiet. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's a great insight. Yeah, um, a calming place. Like, okay, I can I can talk to you now. Mm -hmm. Amen. But right, if he you hear how he spoke to Elijah in that quiet, still voice. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he's like, Lord, I want you quiet all that other stuff, mm -hmm. so you can hear from me. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I was gonna say some of the times I share I'll share with Stacy. I, I feel I'm confident I'm communicating with God, and He's talking back to me. I can be, uh, and it happens a lot when I'm cleaning the pool. Because for me, that's a, you know, right. if I'm at home, it's a time I can just have mm -hmm. peace to myself. I'm in my backyard and I'm just, you know, doing, and I'm just, I can hear him. And I literally, in my mind, I'm having conversations because it's kind of still for me. And I'm just thinking and I'm, I get so, you know, a lot of communication to that point is when it's just quiet and mm -hmm. I can just let my mind, even if it's racing, he can slow it down during that moment. And I can right. literally hear from God mm -hmm. when I'm having this conversation in my mind. In my heart, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and listen for for some of us that that struggle with uh, with that. Number two, don't be a perfectionist about mindfulness. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all, oh my, 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 it's all interrupted. Man, I was I spent time and I got this and I'm praying. Everything was going good and now my day is ruined. No, just get back on track. <laughs> Hey man, yeah. Lord, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, I got all of it. <laughs> but it's okay, huh? Yeah, some things may get a little crazy, but it's okay. Just, just get back on track, because it's so times when you're gonna get interrupted. Things yeah. happen, yeah. but get back to it. So some of us, I know we got, we are perfectionists. We get all distracted, our whole day is ruined. God was like, we had great 10 minutes going. You let that little thing ruin. Yeah. This, come on now, get back on track. Right? We beat up on ourselves. The enemy will beat up on us if we're not careful. So there you are to be a perfectionist. Yeah. And then I love this, lean into the rhythm of your work. So, so, so again, all of us have, you know, you have a regular, regular rhythm of life. Some of y'all, uh, uh, when you were working, you know, you had a right. I wake up at this time. I eat bread. I get my coffee. I, I do this. Well, lean into that. Use that as a part of time. Start leveraging that time. Mm -hmm. If you know you can't function without your coffee, and it's going to be a, a, a spiritual battle, go ahead and get your cup first. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> lean, lean into that. Use that in in the regular. Leverage your your lunch time, if you know your lunch time, you get 15 minutes of quiet time without the job or whatever. Lean into your regular rhythm of work. Make that a part of what you do to spend that time to be mindful, right? Because people say, I don't have no time. Well, you can take time. But lean into your regular rhythm, right? And so, and then also gather resources on, on the topic. I, well, I don't know how to hear from God. Well, we got, I just gave you some scriptures to help you. To, to learn and lean on him. Uh, get uh, books and different resources. Um, uh, Spurgeon has 
you know, spiritual disciplines, where he talks about uh, the discipline of silence and solitude. Um, uh, Dr. Trammell wrote a whole uh, wrote a book on there, so I think it's on Audible as well, uh, about Christian mindfulness. Gather your resources. Use those things to help you to really make wise decisions and be more spiritual discerning, being spiritually aware. Amen? Because this is a spiritual, our life, we are spiritual beings. Yeah. Our life is spiritual. We don't wrestle against what? Flesh and blood. Yeah. It's a spiritual fight. And so even those things that we fight in our minds and our hearts and our devotional time, it's a spiritual battle. And then I want you to see my little, my little, this is my, uh, my common stone. I wish I had a little water to run down. <laughs> No, some of y'all, some of y'all have that place in your backyard where you just go and you know. And some I know, I know Fee, I know Fee like go to the to the beach and be around the water. Some people like just to be around certain things that bring them into a mindset. You know, uh, now we have the the, the beach sounds. Yeah. You do your meditation, turn on the beach sound, and bring you to that place. But the whole point is again. Put some of these practices to use to help you to be in tune to what God uh, has for us. That's an extra slide. So now, real quick, I need some volunteers. We almost done. Need some volunteers. Um, who's gonna take Second Timothy three sixteen for me? Somebody just raise your hand. All right, find it for me, Christine. Who's gonna take Acts eighteen nine for me? Boy, Des Marie, uh, Stacy, you got James one one five through six. It's uh, it's not on your paper. I'll look at it and give it. Um, and then DJ, you're gonna take Acts 6, 1 through 4. All right. And so so we're talking about now, we're talking about leveraging the scripture in decision making. You think God gave us 66 books just for our entertainment? <laughs> All right. Now, now, now listen, uh, what do love letters do? When you get a love letter, what does a love letter do for you? It speaks to your heart. It speaks to your heart, right? Encourage. Encourage. Right, make you feel good. All right, you know, you know, you know you talk about the Bible and love, right? But, but listen, most love letters don't give you instructions on how to live in light of how the one who wrote it to you. Right. See, this is a love letter, but but this is a love letter that's for life to help guide you and and, and help you to live according to the one who loves you the most. Right, so so again, leveraging the scripture and decision making. So God guides decision making. If you are in tune with the Spirit of God in your life, it is God who will guide your decision making. And not only will He guide, He told you, "I will guide you." I gave you the Spirit of Truth to help guide you. I gave you my. Come on, man, this we we have, we've been leveraged. He gave us His Word. He gave us His Spirit. Amen. We got all this to help us make decisions. Yeah. So uh, God guides through scripture. Somebody uh, who got has second to me. All scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correction, for correcting, for training in righteousness, so that man, the man of God, may be complete, equipped for every good work. Amen. 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 All scripture, thank you, Christine. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable, good for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. So the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. So God guides through what? Through the scripture. Who gave us the scripture? He did. Who inspired it? He did. He said, Look, you got problems, uh, you know, regulating and checking folk, check them in the work. Right. See, it's not as your pastor, you know, in my opinion is is not with the standard. Right. You know, I don't, I don't like you doing that, Cheryl, because well, why? Because I just don't like it. <laughs> no, I gotta run it through the script through the scripture. The scripture is a standard. No matter what I don't like, this is what the word of God says. It's good for reproof. And when you act a fool, or you act a fool, I'm gonna check you because you did this. No, the word don't check you. Yeah, yeah. This is what we're going to use, the word. So we run it through scripture. When we talk about dealing in our, our families, in our marriages, in our 
relationships with, with our uh, employees and uh, employers and co-workers, all those things can be run through the scripture, right? Run through the scripture. It's profitable. And not only that, it's the word of God that trains us on to make how to make wise decisions, right? So God also guides through supernatural intervention. Ooh. <laughs> supernatural. Acts 18.9. One night, the Lord spoke to Paul in the vision and told him, don't be afraid, speak out, don't be silent. Mm. God spoke through what? A vision. Supernatural intervention. Right? God spoke to him in the vision, told him what? Go ahead, Dad. Uh, don't be afraid, speak out. Don't be, don't be afraid. Don't be silent. I'm going to put you before these folks. Don't be afraid. Do you know that God guides through supernatural adventure? Some of our circumstances, God will jump in and intervene. Right? Anybody ever experienced a, a supernatural intervention? <laughs> Amen. Well, God will just step in and you're like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> See, supernatural intervention is not always a miracle. Uh, but sometimes it's uh, like when, uh, uh, when, when God... Um, Use his uh, master key to uh, let the apostles out of jail, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? And so, so again, he speaks to internet, uh, supernatural intervention. Sometimes he'll speak to you. It might be through a vision. It might be through uh, that quiet, that quiet voice. It might might be uh, 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 through uh, uh, your, and as we'll see in the next thing, through your situation. But he supernaturally intervenes. And speaks to us. So he guides that way. Then uh, he guides through prayer. This is uh, often the uh, most uh, uh, often how he, he guides us is through uh, prayer. Oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 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 So uh, somebody read that one. You uh, got it all on your paper. So we did. We gained one. Now, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives to all generously and without criticizing, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith without doubting, for the doubters is like the surging sea, driven and tossed by the wind. Amen. So this goes back to, to some of the things that we had uh, talked about uh, before. Toss what? To and fro. If you don't what? Why, why, why won't we be tossed to and fro if we do what? Have faith. Grounded in the Amen. Grounded in the word. Grounded in the word. What does this world do? Have us flip flopping back and forth. The culture turns. I mean, it's always changing. Right? Uh, some of us are Facebookians. Right? Now the kids look at look at us like we ancient. Uh -huh. Oh, that's Facebook is for that. So they get Facebook. Now they Instagram almost becoming old. Mm -hmm. Then they they on Snapchat. Mm -hmm. Then they do it uh, TikTok. 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 Yeah. Right. All these things that are hidden. But if you're not prayerful, you won't be able to discern mm -hmm. what is going on, and it can drag you. Mm -hmm. You instead of you being the influencer on their life, they're being influenced. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, prayer keeps us what? Connected to the one who does what? Go back to Proverbs. Sees everything. See, when you're prayerful, you're not, you're not scared of platforms. You're looking for leverage. So even though they, they, yeah, they're listening to that, okay, well, how am I going to use this for, for your glory? How can I use this for a teachable moment or an object lesson? Right? Because... Again, it's not like God said, oh, wow, they're coming up with all these newfangled uh, platforms. I've never saw that coming. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just so stunned. This swirl is out of control. I need, need our Christians to stamp up. None of this caught him by surprise. Amen. But it's us as we prayerfully seek him, seek his guidance, all right, through prayer to be able to leverage those things for his glory. All right, so we got one more. We got one more. Okay, yeah, yeah. six one through four. God guides through circumstances. This is this is a good one right here. Go ahead. Seven men chose to serve, 
But as the believers, let's see the uh, NLT version. But as the believers rapidly multiplied, there were rumblings of discontent. The Greek speaking believers complained about the Hebrew speaking believers, saying that their wills were being discriminated against in the daily distribution of food. So the 12 called a meeting of all the believers. They said, We apostles should spend our time teaching the word of God, not running a food program. Mm. And so, brothers, Select seven men who are all well respected and will and are full of the spirit and wisdom. <clears throat> we will guide them, we will give them this responsibility. Then we apostles can spend our time in prayer and teaching the word. Amen. Amen. Thank you. The, so that was God guides through circumstance. So what happened in the first century, you had a had an issue. Between what they thought was some discrimination between the, the uh, Hebrew speaking Jews and then the, the Greek speaking Jews who thought their people were being taken care of. And out of that was born the deacon's ministry. Right. So here we are, 2000 years. We got Deacon Will, Deacon Viller, Deacon Lewis, we got Deacon like yeah. Deacon, what's your name? Harold Willis. We got all these deacons born out of this ministry. Through what? Circumstance. Through circumstance. God didn't say in, 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 in Acts or where Jesus didn't say to his disciples, I need y'all to establish the deacon ministry. But God, in his wisdom, he, he orchestrated these circumstances so that an actual uh, um, office or calling in the church would be established so that the apostles can focus on the proclamation of the word. He used circumstances. Some of you, you fight against your circumstance, but God has orchestrated the circumstances to guide you to where he wants you to go. And sometimes those circumstances don't feel good. That wasn't a good circumstance. There was some rumbling in the church. There was some problems in the church. The apostle like, man, y'all, you know what? I'm tired of hearing this. This is choose for yourself. That solution actually came from God. And, and what God did, establish a ministry so for the betterment of the what? Of the body of Christ. And so God guides through scripture. We talk about decision making. God guides through supernatural intervention. God guides through prayer. And God guides through circumstances. And in all those situations, if you understand that the Holy Spirit dwells in you, you are tapped in so that you can hear him better. Amen. 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 Any questions on that uh, so far? Y'all tracking? Yep. Okay. Cool. Cool. We almost we almost done. And so um, the work of the Holy Spirit in decision making. A lot of times we forget. Again, the Holy Spirit is working in us. Um, how often? Uh, what, what days you get the Holy Spirit off? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> huh? No. Or you 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 want to ask? What, what days you get the Holy Spirit off? <laughs> get, oh, I was we got, oh, what, what decisions do you delegate to the Holy Spirit? But we often delegate. We're like, okay, I got this. Right. Yeah. That's the truth. That's transparent. Yeah. I got I got this. It's, I mean, it ain't no big deal. I got this. I can, I can handle this. And a lot of times we don't say it that way. But in practice, that's how we act. Right. right? The scripture tells us to pray about some things. Everything. Did it say some things? All, all things. Did it say pray on occasion about all other things? things. <laughs> all right. You know what I'm saying? Like a few things? All, all things, things, right? All things. It tells us we, we should always be in prayer, right? Sometimes we need to be conscious of that. So the work of the Spirit, listen to what, what Jesus said. This is. Jesus' own word. He says, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you how long? Forever. Forever. He is the spirit of truth. The world is unable to receive him because it does not see him or know him. But you do know him because he what? Remains with you and will be in you. So, so the Holy Spirit don't have office hours. He He will remain with you and will be in you. So, so when it comes to our decision making, we have help. 
with us at all times. So the question becomes, when we talk about spiritual discernment, how often do we tap into the resource that we have right there with us? Can you imagine you got a resource that dwells in you that knows everything? Now, I know some of us know everything. <laughs> but, but we, got, we got a resource in us. The spirit of the living God that dwells in us that knows everything. And so when it comes to those things that we struggle with, God, I don't know what to do. He knows what to do. And we got to talk to him and we got to listen to him. But more than that, we got to do what he tells us. Amen? Amen. 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 So listen, um, let me hear some of your, some of your thoughts on what you learned. Was it, was it helpful? And we'll talk about, really quick, let me back up. Um, we, meditation techniques. See, some of you, we talked about that a little bit in class, um, getting along with the Lord, finding the new place where you can really hear from, from him. Uh, now earphones have become a part of my life because I got Jeremiah and all that other stuff. I just put the earphones up and, and I'm good. Um, journaling, we got some journals here. I know Marisha shared about you found some of your old journals. Um, so journaling, having those different things, sometimes that'll be a good time to uh, silence your, your uh, all the, the noise, and really help you to focus. Some people focus through being able to write and then being able to just share with uh, God what's on your heart and bringing that back. Even if you got a decision to make, writing that decision down. You ain't got to make the decision now. Writing it down. Mm -hmm. Talking to the Lord about <clears throat> bathing it in prayer. Those are some of the things you want to you want to think about. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, any questions, comments, thoughts? Give some feedback before we go. I only got like ninety seconds. Go ahead. Right, I, I, I do appreciate the, the lesson. And the <coughs> um, a lot of the stuff we do know, but, but we need to hear it again to remind ourselves and refresh on that. So for me, the, the refresher was to pause and ponder yeah. because I do not do that enough, yeah. and, and it creates chaos. I don't live well in chaos, so then my mind starts to do things mm -hmm. that. And I, my actions reflect the chaos in my mind, and that's the other place to be for me. So I, I needed that moment to go back and pause and ponder. And that's a powerful piece that recognize how even the environment that you do well in, because then you start to okay, I need to seek that out, even if it's a place or a time, right, to get that. Thank you. Uh, Will? Uh, real quick, what I got out of the session was excellent. I got the essence out of this uh, by being intentional to uh, slow down, sit still, to slide, to reflect, and just be in silence. So that you can hear the Holy Spirit for the discernment. So it's excellent. Just got some tools. Uh, Amen. 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 Good stuff. Go ahead. Sure. Uh, the thing that I got, what you said, Celeste said from the last class to pause and ponder, mm -hmm. because I'm a person that reacts, reacts. So I've just been thinking about this pause and ponder. Yeah. Trust in God. Yeah. Just slow down. Go ahead, everybody. I learned a lot about discernment. Uh, most of you know I'm from a family of 12, and we always have this tenth child that always just seemed to be doing things out of the ordinary that none of the rest of us would try to do. You know? And I'll give you an example. She was on the road going to St. Louis Airport. Her car stopped. And she prayed about it. She called Auto Club, and it said, you know, it's going to be an hour and 15 minutes. Well, she knew she was going to miss the flight and miss the cruise with the rest of the time. Two people came along. She checked them out. She prayed this. She always quoted Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And she had discernment. So she got in the car with these two guys on the wow. that took her to the service station. The tow truck came back out, picked the car up. She left her card there. She said, I have great discernment of people. I've been in Iraq. God, God delivered me from that. And when she came back, they said, call us. We'll come to the airport and pick you up. And you know, one of the guys and his wife came and picked her up. But now the none of the rest of us. <laughs> You're like, you're crazy. <laughs> she always 
God tells me if it's good or if it's bad, if I should do this or That's not. Good. He's like, girl, you, you're not. <laughs> wow. Wow. But she wasn't going to miss that flight and that cruise with the rest of them. Amen. Wow. Wow. I would have missed them. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I can't catch y'all on another island. Yeah. <laughs> But again, that, and that's something that's super a supernatural yeah, gift, yeah. and to be able to trust that, yeah. and y'all know, it. yeah, yeah, y'all know that she does. Yeah. Man, go ahead, Harold. I would add that I, I one thing that stuck with me is when I'm doing Bible plans, or I'm studying, or I'm doing some reading. To after that stop, don't like you look at it more as a task, but I'm trying to really get something from God. Right, so like, even when Kendall and I were, were finishing, all right, she goes off to do what she's doing. Or if I'm reading, take time to sit there and meditate on what I just experienced. That was one of the things that took us. Powerful, powerful. 